Welcome back, everybody. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages. Next week, we'll be getting into the holiday, talking about good food, good people, and just goodness in general. But I'm afraid that I have some bad news to share this week. Last Friday, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services announced that they would begin using a new civics test for all immigrants filing for naturalization and citizenship. A much harder test. Think of it as a final thank you gift from President Trump, who just loves to give and give. The good news is that for those who are eligible right now, if you file or submit your application before December 1st, you can still take the old test. Remember that date and tell all your friends. In today's video, I'll be comparing the two tests to motivate those who can to apply now and to prepare those who can't for what is to come. So, first of all, let me point out that just the civics test will be changing, not the English test. For that portion, you'll still be judged on speaking throughout the entire interview and also need to read and write three sentences, scoring correctly on at least one of each. The civics test is designed to assess your knowledge of things like U.S. government, history, culture, and the rights and responsibilities of citizens. The old test, known as the 2008 test, had 100 possible questions, downloadable from the USCIS website. I'll give you that link a little later. From that pool, your interviewer chose 10 questions at random, and you had to answer at least six correctly. This test was, and still is, completely oral or spoken, which is potentially the hardest part, especially for language learners. That means you simply must know the answers. No multiple choice here. Some are easy. What is the capital of your state? Raleigh, here in North Carolina. And some are hard. The House of Representatives has how many voting members? 435, for now. Some answers change from year to year or city to city, especially after a big election like we just had. Many have more than one possible response, although the guide recommends that you try to stick with the answers they provide. This is not the time to get scholarly. All in all, pretty challenging, yet about 90% of those who take it pass. Compare that to a study conducted in 2018 by the Woodrow Wilson National Fellowship Foundation that showed only 36% of native-born American adults passing. Doing what they always do to cover up their incompetence after an embarrassing study like that, the Trump administration decided in 2019 to punish the hardworking immigrants by making the test even harder. This new 2020 test is the result conveniently released after the elections. What's new? Now, applicants need to answer 20 questions instead of 10 and get 12 correct. They also have 128 possible questions to study. That much more to remember. Let's take a look at some of these important questions. Test yourself to see how many you get right. Seriously, pause the video if you need time to think. But no cheating. Number one, why do U.S. representatives serve shorter terms than U.S. senators? Of course, you already know that representatives serve two years and senators serve six. Those are also potential questions. The answer? Apparently, to more closely follow public opinion. Okay. Number two, what is the purpose of the Tenth Amendment? It states that the powers not given to the federal government belong to the states or to the people. In other words, if it doesn't mention it in the Constitution, the states get to decide. It's funny, they asked that obscure question, but eliminated the one about the First Amendment. Nothing about the Second Amendment either. Question three. James Madison is famous for many things. Name one. 
Native born citizens may recognize him as one of our presidents, number four, but they likely don't remember anything about the Federalist Papers and his role as, quote unquote, father of the Constitution. There's also a question now about Alexander Hamilton for all you Broadway lovers. Question number four. Why did the United States enter the Persian Gulf War? Depending on your age, this can be a hard question to answer. It was supposedly to force the Iraqi military from Kuwait. They also ask why we went to Vietnam and Korea, communism of course, but not why we started wars in Iraq or Afghanistan, which to me seems more relevant. Finally, question number five, Let's see if you were paying attention earlier when I gave you the answer. This one's an oldie, but a goodie. How many voting members are there in the U.S. House of Representatives? 435, of course. Until next year, that is, when they finish tallying up the census and assign new numbers to each state. So, how'd you do? Did you get all five correct? How would you like it if I threw 15 more questions at you just like this? That's a lot to remember, isn't it? And you only get two chances. Fail this test twice and you can kiss your chances of citizenship goodbye. So you know though, if you do meet the cutoff and are eligible to take the 2008 test, but fail, the second time you also get to take the same test, the 2008 version. One more final note. There are exceptions for certain groups of people. For example, if you are over the age of 65 and have been a legal permanent resident for 20 years or more, you only need to study 20 questions and answer 10. This is the same for both tests. I know I've already asked you a bunch of questions, but here's one more for homework. It isn't a new question, but it is a good one especially now right after the election. Each state has two senators, and those are relatively easy to look up. The representatives, though, from the House of Representatives, the national one, mind you, not your states, they're harder to find because one city or even county may have more than one. It comes down to your exact address. But don't worry, there are plenty of resources online to help. This is a good excuse to practice those internet research skills in English. When you figure out your answer, post it below or send me an email. While you're doing that, feel free as well to share any other civics-based questions from either test that you liked, hated, or would like to learn more about. As promised, here is the website for Immigration Services with all the information you could ever need regarding the naturalization process. Thank you, as always, for watching my video. Check out more at apexlanguages.com. Help me spread the word about this December 1st deadline. And have a happy, healthy, safe rest of your week.